All right, so now on to some of the material from chapter uh, chapter one. And all I'm doing is I'm doing the exercises that start on page 31. Uh, before watching this, you might wanna make sure that you've actually gone through the book. You might uh, up to page 30, you might wanna make sure that you're looking at the slides that I've offered from the book. Um, and then what would be really valuable is if you kind of tried to do this along with me, right? And that would be kind of a nice way to get uh, some of this material in. This particular chapter was all about basically just starting with Visual Studio. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at it, kind of get a feel for it. We're going to open up an already existing project and uh, ultimately um, climax with build and then running it. And then uh, and then shut it down. That's kind of that's kind of the deal there. So um, what I've got uh, going into this, just so you know, uh, over here, I've got uh, I created a, a directory. Well, I had the directory called College already, uh, and in here I've got the student uh, download. And the student download is uh, oops over here. Uh, again, you could download it from uh, the source itself. I believe is students. But you also got it right there. If you basically uh, go to the content section, go to syllabus, download and unzip, you will basically be lucky enough to have one of those. And what you're going to see is, is I'm going to deviate a little bit from the book, but I'm going to go in, go in, go to the book applications, and look at basically chapter chapter one. That's that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. But let's just uh, let's just have fun. So over here, I've got Visual Studio up. And so looking at it, it says start. Uh, so again, looking at page 31, the very first section, the first question, start Visual Studio. And then um, I have had this running for quite a bit, but I don't have that wonderful uh, def something that's asking me to set the default environment and things like that. We will actually uh, deal with that in the next chapter. But this chapter, uh, I, I dismissed it and, and uh, I've actually cleaned out a lot of my stuff. So this should look a lot like what one of your brand new installations would look like. That was basically number one. Number two says, review the start window and see what it has to offer. Well, uh, I don't know if that's also not here anymore, but we'll just let that go. Use a file menu to display the open project dialog box. And again, I, I don't think that's actually here because I've already got this open. I've got myself ready to go over here. So questions one through two and three might have something to do with when you initially start this thing up. Um, I can't remember, so so have fun with that. But now, let's deal with number four. In the Solutions Explorer, double click on, uh, oh, sorry, no, number three, number three. I could still do this. It says in the file menu, but realistically, I'm gonna open it up here. I'm gonna open up the existing project that we're gonna be playing with for chapter one. So I click on this guy and it opens up and it's going to the wrong spot, which is awesome. So I'm gonna go and find it. Go, go. In my case, I'm going to book applications, question one, financial, and I'm going to look for a SLN or solutions file. I'm going to click on solution. I'm going to go open and, uh, and off it goes and it opens. Now, the first time you do this, it might take a bit longer because it's going to be kind of decompressing a lot of stuff and all sorts of action going on here. But this is not my first rodeo with this particular uh, file, so that's why it came up relatively easily. Also, what you might be looking at is you might you might end up looking more at this. Oh, see, that's the thing. There it is. Anyway, you might your your window at this point may look like this. This is basically the same file. In one case, it's showing us the design view, and the other case is showing us the source code view. So definitely kind of get familiar with what you're looking at there. The design view is over here. And then this is in C sharp or SF, uh, CF. All right. Um, and we'll be spending plenty of time in here. But what, what I want you to sort of see, yes, you know, don't go ahead, don't go ahead. So, okay, number four, we are going to double click on the firm investment CS file, which kind of is happening already. But anyway, if I wanted to sort of do what the book says, if I double click on this, there it is, it brings up this, uh, this design view, all right? Now, um, we got the tab for design, as I said, and then uh, that's on my number, um, this is actually number, number five, sorry. Uh, uh, it says to click on the file, firminvestment.cs and press F7. 
Oh, I should have done that. So let's do this. I'm going to click on the file. I'm going to push F7. Boom. All right. So now I'm back over to here. Good deal. And then uh, it says Control Tab to move back to the code editor window. Control Tab. And awesome. Control Tab. Neat. All right. That's kind of interesting. And then moving back and forth. So what happened there is I'm, my focus is over inside the inside the code. Control tab. I could choose some other spots, but in this case, it's going to go back to the tab. All right. Focus is, is where the uh, application is, is currently focused on. So right now it's focused on this tab. I can also do that manually by simply just clicking down here too. Now the focus, you can see, you see the, from the blinking cursor, is in the actual code. All right, number six, click the tab, uh, uh, firm investment CS design, and now we can see the design. All right, and now it's also saying, hey, press control tab back and forth. So we do that, we're here. We're now back to the code, do this. And now notice it's going to design, and it goes back. Cool, so that was basically number six. Number seven, if the toolbox is hidden, where is the toolbox? Well, it's over here, here's the toolbox, and it is in fact hidden. Click its tab along the left side of the window to display. It. All right, so here's some tool stuff which we'll be screwing around with uh, a bit later. Now, notice it's exposed here, but as soon as I click back, if, as soon as I put, bring focus basically away from that uh, window, it disappears again. If I don't like that, then what I can do is I can pin it. And that's what the point of uh, of number seven is it's showing us the push pin. As soon as I click the push pin, it's now in there forever, and I can click back and forth, back and forth. All right, so that's cool. Personally, sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't. Uh, I probably am going to unpin it for now because I don't want to lose that real estate. You'll notice it's the same deal with some of these other spots too. See that pin? It basically means auto hide. So basically, it'll it'll only show up when I go on and click on it. See, just like that. All right, number eight is an interesting one if you've got multiple screens, right? So I can undock this. And notice here, it's kind of showing me where, where I could be putting it, right? I can undock. Uh, sometimes I think that's useful if you are going to try and bring it onto another screen like I just did. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if you ever want to redock it, it's going to be basically uh, you hit uh, hold down your control, it's the last line on that page, and you double click, and it'll basically redock itself back up to there. Why would you do stuff like that? Well, maybe you want more space here, and you just want to basically move this off. Or maybe you just, you know, some of us actually have three monitors going. We actually have different things on different monitors. So so it's not it's not it's not crazy that it's showing us. All right, now we're on the top of uh, number nine. Number nine says to click the symbol, the arrow symbol next to the reference folder in the Solutions Explorer window to see the namespaces. All right, so the references folder. I don't see a references folder. So um, I, I guess I'm okay with this for now. What I would do in this case, it's just trying to demonstrate that these little arrows expand and then contract. Expand and then contract. Okay, so that's kind of what that's uh, demonstrating there. Click the symbol next to the firm investment CS file. So we go to the firm investment CS file. It's actually already expanded, actually. Oh, well, that's what, kind of what it's called expand, collapse, expand, collapse. So, anyway, so they basically want me to expand this guy. And uh, if I click on the form designer.cs file, and uh, now it's showing me some of the code over here that's behind the form designer. Another sort of just another piece of, of that code. Um, and now we're in the preview tab. It says then click the keep open button in the tab to open the code in the code editor. I must have just somehow done that because now the code's sitting in the code editor. Um, and then it gives us some background as to what that is. So I'll let you look at that. All right. So now we're excited. Uh, we've opened the file. We've looked a little bit into the guts of this particular file. And I hope that uh, you're feeling a little bit both excited and a little bit scared at the same time, because there's some interesting code going on in these, uh, in these, in these things. 
So now let's do this. It says on number uh, 12 to close the solution file. To go file, close solution. So close just closes the actual thing that you were looking at. Close solution will shut down the entire solution as well. And so it's done. Now, um, notice that now this thing that I was working on is now showing up in my most recent. And if at some point, by the way, you want to clean this up, like maybe you just work on something for 10 seconds, you don't, you'll know you'll never care about it again. You can always right click and remove it from list. If you think this is going to be very important to you, you can also right click and pin it. So it'll always stay up in this section right above today. It'll actually stay out there forever. All right. So that's kind of a little, uh, little pro tip there. But anyway, so we're going to reopen the project by basically uh, going, it says using file uh, recent projects. I, I don't see the file here, so I'm not sure what they're talking about, but I do see the actual file I'm supposed to do. So I'm going to double click on this and now it's reopening and it's initializing. So it's doing a whole bunch of stuff and boom, it's up and now running. So that was basically close and reopen project, questions 12 and 13. So now the next one is build and run the application. Very exciting stuff now, all right? Because th at this point we can't use this program. This is all sitting in the source code. Uh, so now if you want to build it, if you want to translate it to the interpreter language or LIL, we, sorry, not LIL, we want to translate it to IL, you can go build and then build solutions. And what you'll see down here is the, um, the, the basically the creation of um, a runnable, runnable uh, program, which is kind of cool, all right? If this didn't work, especially if you got a mark of the web error, again, reading your errors, I do have another video out there showing you guys how to resolve that mark of the error, all right? Mark of the web, mark of the web. But so that's basically building and that's exciting. And uh, uh, and I'm sure you guys are gonna get very familiar with seeing error messages and things like that. But at this point, it, it once succeeded. So it built this entire project, once succeeded, nothing failed, everything's good, all right? So now the next step is to run it, where you you could basically go, and actually how's it saying you need to do it here? It says, by clicking the start button in the standard toolbar. Now you're going to go, where's the start button? Well, that's actually the start button right there. Now, at least I think it's the start button. Feel free to correct me, but that, that's how, what I would interpret the start button to be. Now here's the deal. Um, I've built it, so this should basically run without uh, much of an issue. If you haven't built it yet, what it will do is build the program, right? Because you got those sort of three uh, not three, but you got the step where it's all code and then it gets interpreted to um, intermediate language and then it gets run through the .NET framework. Now, if, if you try to run something that's just straight in code, that um, it'll want to build it first is I guess what I'm saying, all right? So uh, I think honestly, good people probably build first and See if there's kind of if there's going to be any error messages, and then um, and then uh, and then run it. So anyway, I'm going to run it right now. So I'm going to go click on the uh, find out uh, this, the run button, and off it goes. Look at it; it's, it's like a charm. There's so many other neat things happening here. I'm kind of liking some of this stuff too that is showing me it, it running. But right now, this program is, is actually running, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, so it says run it by clicking your calculator to display the next form. Then experiment with the form until I understand what it does. So, you know, calculate investments. What does that do? That is this design. I'm going to go exit. Uh, calculate SID depression. What does that do? That looks like it's another form that's firing up. I can go exit and watch what happens as soon as I go exit here. Bang. Now we're back and we get all this information. I think we probably actually had that information before. Let me let me just uh, tell you what another cool thing here is we're going to clear all so there's no no more information. I'm going to run it so I can see exactly what this thing is saying. Oh so we can't see it. I guess we can't see all that mess and stuff in the background. Um, 
number 16 basically says to calculate the, uh, you know, uh, click on this thing to display another form, which is fine, whatever. Uh, we've actually just done number 17 by clicking, well, I click on the exit, but of course there's another way I could click on the X. Notice that this application is actually getting a lot of default functionality from the .NET framework itself. So I didn't have to code for a minimize, a restore, and um, a, an exit window. This stuff came with the actual form, and that's going to be kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to go exit, and then the last thing I got to do is I'm going to go close the project. So I'm going to uh, this is, it says close the project. So this says close the project. I don't see a closed project, but I do see a closed solution. So I'm going to close it, and now I'm going to shut this entire thing down. And I don't know if I had another one open or not. So I'm not sure why it's still open. So I'm going to close that down. And now we're done. So that was everything you had to do for the first, uh, first um, chapter.